Being a low mastery rank 10 I remember looking towards other players to see what they were using. What primaries, what secondaries, what melees, what secrets could I uncover? And there was one secondary weapon that kept coming up. The Axe Stiletto Prime. It was immensely popular and immensely powerful. And while it did retain its popularity over the years, its strength is another topic entirely. And today my friends, we're gonna be diving deeper into this secondary weapon. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a couple of builds lined up. Something cheap, something affordable that most Tenno should be able to build. But of course, we also got the quote-unquote endgame with Prime mods, a Riven, everything. That said though, please keep in mind that my builds and guides usually take a new player-friendly approach. I'm gonna be taking my time and explaining whatever I feel is necessary for newer players. So in case you're a vet, and you already know most of this stuff, please, bear with me. Now with that out of the way, let's jump into the Axe Stiletto Prime. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, our usual free shots. The Axe Stiletto Primes are a pair of automatic hit scan pistols. So when it comes to usability, it doesn't really get any more easier than this. You point, you shoot, and you win. Maybe you win. Now, the accuracy does get called into question, however, this is gonna be our usual 15 meter test, something like so, and take a look at how many bullets land outside the crosshairs. Almost none. Almost none whatsoever, but you see the pattern and the splash? This is good enough, unless you factor in Magnum Force, so bear that one in mind. The recoil on this one is basically non-existent, it does climb, Slightly, ever so slightly, but nothing you can't handle. It's one of the most steadiest secondary weapons in Warframe. The fire rate, solid. And the reload, super quick at 1.1 seconds with a 40 magazine capacity. So once again, my friends, when it comes to usability, the Axe Stiletto Primes are definitely worth keeping in mind. Now let's have a closer look at what we're dealing with. Mod capacity, 60 out of 60. And if your comes with only 30 out of 30, and by all means it should, jump into actions, plug in that Auto King Catalyst, double that mod capacity. There was a time when I would say, hey listen, plug into this one, the Catalyst, all the format that you need, and max it out. That was the time when the Axe Stiletto Prime was a top tier weapon. That time is gone. Don't get me wrong, it's still a strong weapon, but it's definitely not top tier material anymore. When it comes to format, I got only four in mind because this is not a forma heavy weapon. You can get away with just two forma, free if you have a Riven. But is it worth unlocking the weapon Exilus mod slot or not? And I'm gonna go with a no. Little momentum is essentially worthless, right? It's a hit scan weapon, so you don't care about the actual projectile flight speed. There is no damage drop off, right? So this doesn't really do much of anything. Recoil, perhaps you don't like that tiny little bit of recoil, you can go with steady hands, but honestly, come on. And there's still one more mod which is worth mentioning. Pistol ammo mutation? Nah, you can just drop pads. I mean targeting subsystems. But this one on hit, a 30% accuracy when aiming. The problem with this one is that it's such a minute difference, it's not really worth it. Allow me to demonstrate what? Magnum Force. You remember what I said about Magnum Force earlier? Well, we're gonna go Magnum Force and Multi-Shot just so you can see the effect like this without targeting subsystems and then we're gonna mount on targeting subsystems so you can see exactly the difference. The same 15 meter test as before. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. A lot of the bullets completely outside of the crossers. About 40%. I counted seven times, it's around 40%. Now, if I was gonna go with targeting subsystems, you would think that that's gonna be a whole lot better, right? Unfortunately not. Again, it goes back to how accuracy is calculated in Warframe. So I'm gonna shoot this guy, so I can get my targeting subsystems buff. I'm gonna take the same 15 meter test and I'm just gonna shoot a buff. Still have the buff, still have the buff, still have the buff. See that? There is a difference, but it's a minute difference. So honestly, it's simply not worth it. At least not if you ask me. The option, as always, is yours. Let's talk about critical stats. 15% as a base? Nah. Why? Why do you do this? Actually, believe it or not, these were great stats back like three years ago, simply because it had good crit and good status chance at the same time. But nowadays, a 15% base is simply a tad on the low side. Pity because the critical multiplier is decent. This is the quote unquote standard critical multiplier at 2.0x. Good fire rate at 708 with a good magazine capacity and a super quick reload at 1.1 seconds. 
and a Riven disposition of sadly still only 1 out of 5. This is because this weapon is still extremely popular. So it kind of works like this, if you're not familiar with Riven Disposition, the more popular a weapon is, the more Tenno use it, the lower the Riven Disposition, therefore the weaker the Rivens. The less popular a weapon is, the more weak a weapon is, the higher the Riven Disposition to theoretically give it a fighting chance at players to use it. You get how that one works. Or at least that was the intention of the developer. Anyway, status chance solid at 30% trigger auto. And here's the biggest issue with the Axtelator Prime. It's not the low-ish base critical chance is this thing, impact. The highest amount of damage by a mile is going to be impact because the base damage for a secondary weapon for this type, this architecture type of a secondary weapon is good at 36 per bullet. That's really good. The problem is most of it, it's bloody impact. So that's the issue. Speaking about issues, let's talk about a standard build. And we got damage at Hornet Strike, multi shot with Battle Diffusion, as well as Lethal Torrent, Critical Chance, and Critical Damage with Pistol Gambit and Target Cracker. Initially, we're gonna go for the normal mods, and then we're gonna switch to Prime mods because not everybody has Prime mods. Next, we got an elemental combo of Corrosive form with Pistol Pestilence and Jolt. The problem here is the fact that Jolt can only be obtained from Battle Kit here, the Void Trader. No, it cannot be farmed from the game unfortunately. So when you see Battle bring the 60-60 electricity mods, usually he brings all four. Make sure you have a copy of each. But Jolt and Voltaic Strike are prior one simply because those cannot be farmed from the game. You can also buy them from the trade chat, however, if you are impatient. If you want them right now, I think on PC they go for about 60 to 80 plat. Check Warframe Market for more appropriate prices. We still got one more mod slot left on the weapon. What are we gonna put into this one? Hmm? What about some fire rate? You guys like fire rate? I can leverage that really quick reload of 1.1 seconds with a little bit of fire rate or a lot of fire rate with anemic agility. Though when it comes with secondary weapons, I still prefer Gunslinger. It's only an 18% fire rate difference at a cost of 15% damage. Keep in mind that that 15% damage goes away from your Hornet Strike or, okay, or your uh, Magnum Force if you choose to use it. It's not really all that terrible as it sounds. What about extra crit chance on this one? Is it worth it? Well, my friends, I'm gonna go with a no. You're gonna think about something like hydraulic crossers, right? On headshot, 135% critical chance when aiming for 9 seconds. This is the Argon scope of secondary weapons, and I think it's around 5 plat on the PC trade chat. It's not worth it because of the low base 15%. So, what are we gonna do? More flat damage with Argon scope? With an uh, uh, Argon. With something. What was it? Agar pack, yeah, it was a what an A, I forgot about this one. This mod is weak. <laughs> I can only put it as simple as that. It's only 90% damage. The beauty of Agar pack is the fact that it's not gonna mess with your proc priority, which in this case doesn't really help us because impact is proc priority number two anyway after corrosive. Keep in mind that the 4x IPS rule that we had up until January of 2020 is gone. Augur Pact, once again, I'll say it one more time, it's it's a mod that you only use when you have nothing better to use. And in this case, we do have something better to use. We're gonna go for another 60-60 mod in the form of Heat and Scorch. And there you go, this is gonna be our initial base build. Then we're gonna switch it up to a couple of things, a couple of things. Don't worry, you guys are gonna love it. But first, let's make sure that Valkyr is not cheating with Corrosive Projection or anything of the sort. We're just gonna switch to an empty build to make sure it's not gonna skew the test results. We're gonna be spawning in level 120, Corrupted Heavy Goons as per usual. And I'm gonna go straight for headshots. So this is a Corrosive Heat build. Oh, almost got him! Almost got him. Almost got him? Is he gonna die? Is he gonna... Nope, it's not gonna die. <laughs> I told you guys, I totally knew it. This guy has like no health. It's like 99.9% .9 and now he's gone. But a build such as this on Corrupted Heavy Goons, a lot of the times you're gonna be left hanging on 99%, but it does kill the target, as you can see. If you go Augur Pact instead of the 60-60 Heat mod, your results will be significantly less good. But of course, if you want a more fun approach, I would still go with a little bit of fire rate. Now these results, Let's be honest here, my friends, it's not exactly fantastic, is it? But you see the number of slash on that there target. Mm -hmm. We do get a whole lot of slash, and I know a lot of you guys enjoy playing into slash builds. Now, the reason why I personally don't enjoy slash builds is simply because I had enough of Hunter Munitions and Vital on primary weapons. But, perhaps secondary weapons are a different kettle of fish? Let's try for a slash build, shall we? Hmm. 
if you're gonna go slash build, you can't go crit slash like you used to before the status chance and effect changes of January 2020. What you gotta go for is slash together with vital. You're forced into vital nowadays. So we're gonna go with the 60-60 cold mod, frostbite, and we're gonna get rid of jolt. This was the only expensive mod on the build. As for the final mod, you might think it's a no-brainer. Hey, you went vital, but the proc priority that you keep talking on about is not fantastic for slash, right? That is proc priority number three, way behind impact. Remember when I said that's the main issue with the weapon, that bloody impact? Yeah, it comes around to bite us in the derriere. Now, what you can go with Slash is something like Mame, right? This is a no-brainer, you go to 120% Slash, it goes over impact, but a smarter idea. Even though you don't get as much Slash, is a brand new mod from the Heart of Deimos expansion pack that I think it's called Stinger of the Carnus. <laughs> this one, only 90% Slash, but an extra 60% status chance. So if you want a slash build, if you really must have a slash build, you can go for something like this. Unfortunately, slash is proc priority number three, after viral and after impact. And you know, when you get to 10 viral procs, that's it. Ideally, in a slash build, you want slash to be proc priority number one, then you would have viral on second or third, because you don't need to go over the 10 cap, 10 viral procs, that is. But let's see how the weapon performs now on the corrupted heavy goons, level 120. Usually the test for a slash build is to hit a target till about 50% then watch the slashes deal the damage. It's not bad, it does work, but unfortunately, all in all, considering the power of those slashes is simply not all that powerful. You got 16 of them on that target. You got your 10 vital rods. The problem, the values are simply not there. Most of the time, this guy should die. 10 procs with 80, take a look at that. If the weapon would have crit a whole lot more, then the value of those slashes would have been better. Again, if you want to go slash, you can go for something like this. That was 23 slashes in that guy with the 10 vital procs. 17 slashes on this one. This one is going to stop around 20%, I believe. See that? <laughs> yes, I did run the test over and over and over again. So again, if you need a slash build, you can go for something like this. Now, I remember I promised you guys something. You said, hey, listen, man, not a lot of people have ribbons for all these weapons. I don't either. Most of them are loners from friends, like 90% of them. So show us prime mods without ribbons and then show us ribbons. So that's exactly what we're going to be doing. But again, on the case of the accidental prime, if you ask me and if you have jolt, because jolt is the issue, right? Let's be honest here. Jolt is the issue. I would still go with free 60-60s and heat being the additional element. Critical chance and critical damage with prime target cracker and prime pistol gamba. 187% critical chance instead of 120 and 110% critical damage instead of 60%. If you ever have a choice between, hey, I don't have all the ducats right now, man, I can buy only one or I don't have all the plat, target cracker over pistol gambit. The difference is bigger. So bear that one in mind. One more time, corrupted heavy goons, level 120. So we showcase the slash build, we showcase the corrosive build, and now with prime mods, a bit more heftier than before, isn't it? You can feel it in actual gameplay. And when it comes to usability, as mentioned before, there's almost no recoil here. The issue in gameplay, believe it or not, is again that freaking impact because your targets play around all over the place and you might say, hey, these targets are standing still. But if you proc impact all the time on your targets, they're still gonna do this cha-cha dance all over the place, which is bloody annoying. Let's be honest here. And that's performance with Prime mods. So let's talk about Riven mods. And this is always such a difficult conversation to have, especially when it comes to Dispo 1 weapons. Is it worth it? Of course not. Don't be silly. It's not worth it. It's a Dispo 1. Those values will be really, really low. That said, though, if you love the weapon and you're trying to get the absolute most you can out of it, yes, you need a Riven, but not just any Riven. You're going to need an extra good roll. That's the problem with Dispo 1. If you manage to get yourself on a unicorn roll or you simply have a whole lot of plat and want to buy them, look for something like this. You got damage, multi-shot, minus impact, and fire rate on this one. That fire rate could have transformed into critical chance. That would have been also nice, but this is one hell of a ribbon. This is an example of a quote-unquote slottable Dispo 1 ribbon. Apparently, this weapon is still super popular. So there you go. This is still a corrosive build, my friends, but only with 260 60 mods of pistol, pistol, lens, and jolt. Now, let's see the difference. One more time. Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 120. Straight for headshots as per usual. Oh yeah, just jumps through them. A Riven can definitely make a difference. And believe it or not, 
the best part to this Riven, outside of the multi-shot, okay, outside of the multi-shot, which is always king, except on uh, grenade launchers, on one grenade launcher, the Sekura Penta, if I remember correctly, is the fact that minus impact, and taken away from that impact, leaves room for the weapon to proc something else, whatever else, not impact, more slash, why the hell not, even though this is not a viral build, you can switch it to a viral build, you're gonna get more slash, you're gonna get whatever else, just not freaking impact and to honor the weapon and the legacy that this weapon has the fact that it made such an impression on me when i was more of a baby tenno and i saw these high mr guys running around with this it not only looked cool it packed one hell of a punch as well we're gonna bump up everything with lady mirage prime i kid i was gonna do that anyway because i get so there you go lady mirage prime uh, so let's check out her fantastic buffs as per usual when you're dealing with heavily armored targets You want to go to corrosive projection enemy armor is reduced by 18% I believe this used to be 23% but they nerfed it down It's not a terrible nerf it's still worth using but if you're not gonna fight heavily armored targets simply forget about this one That said you're not forced into corrosive projection if your build calls for something like I don't know rejuvenation physique Energy Siphon, if you're more newer to Warframe or growing power power donation, go for your aura of choice. When it comes to Arcanes, there's two options, two solid options. Well, there's multiple options, but these are the most solid of options. Arcane Precision R5, far from the third Eidolon down on Cetus, on headshot a 100% chance for 300% damage to pistols for 18 seconds. And Arcane Avenger R5. Now, if you guys... Let's say you don't enjoy hunting Eidolon, even though, take my word for it, it's a lot easier than it used to be. Basically, everything can hunt Eidolon nowadays, and you want to buy it from the trade chat. This is the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe, at least from my subjective point of view. Arcane Avenger R5. It states the following. On damage, a 21% chance for plus 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. And you might say, ah, it's niche and it's only 45%, but this is a bonus additive after. It simply, it simply stacks on top of what you already have. So your weapon can have something like no critical chance or 2% or 3% or whatever else. You're gonna get that 45% guaranteed as long as Avenger is up. And if that wasn't good enough, it applies to your primary, secondary, and to your melee at the same time, which is why I believe Arcane Avenger is the most powerful offensive arcane in Warframe. It's a must-have. It's like Prio 1. Outside of stuff like uh, Energize, for example, that certain Warframe builds can't exactly work without them. Let's kill off these targets. We're gonna bump up the level to 150, like Sue, because I got one more uh, mastery rank. We're gonna be unpausing the eye so they can hit me and I can get my buffs. We're gonna use Empower on Lady Mirage Prime together with her fantastic free ability for an absolutely insane Eclipse buff and one more time Empower and her ever so lovely clones. And of course now I can just melt everything down. When I have this level of buffs what I'm trying to do is conserve some of that ammo because it only takes like three or four bullets to completely annihilate one high level target. But of course this is Mirage Prime. She has that gift of making basically almost any weapon seem powerful. She had trouble with the Stug, but on the other hand, who didn't have trouble with the Stug? But believe it or not, after the whole status chance changes of 2020, the Stug isn't as horrible as it used to be. I'm still not touching it with a 10-foot pole, however. I got off topic, didn't I? So back to the Axtillero Primes. My friends, is it one of the best secondary weapons in Warframe? No. It's not. It's not even close. I don't think maybe it would make my top 10 for the sake of nostalgia. But that doesn't mean it's not worth building. That doesn't mean it doesn't pack one hell of a punch. It simply means that a lot more powerful secondary weapons have come out over the years. Power creep and all whatnot. Also, the status chance and effect changes of January 2020 that I keep mentioning weren't exactly friendly to the Axe Tillero Prime. But I still fully recommend this glorious weapon. It also has legacy on its side, so there's that. As always, my name is Malazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And if you got any sorts of feedback for me, by all means, my friends, drop it in the comment section down below. Also in the comment section down below, if you guys want to suggest any particular type of content. And in all honesty, I can exactly promise you that I'll do it or it's gonna be done by next time or even within a week because these things kind of have a tendency to take a while to make. But what I can promise you is that I will be reading for each and every comment. You can also find me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. And if you love the content, consider supporting us via Patreon. Until next time, my friends. Bye-bye.